The road to Las Vegas in the conference tournament continues tonight in Orem, Utah. The Roos from UMKC take on the Wolverines of Utah Valley. It's live and it's next right here on UVU TV. Center on the campus of Utah Valley University in Orem, Utah. Brandon Crow alongside Holton Hunsaker joining you tonight here on UVU TV. Thank you for letting us be a part of your evening. Utah Valley taking on UMKC and the Ruse tonight. Game two of the official WAC Conference opening schedule for the 2017-2018 season. Utah Valley last week Holton blew the doors off of the conference in dismantling the reigning conference champions. UTRGB defeated UMKC. Utah Valley 1-0, UMKC 0-1. How do you think this is going to shake out tonight? It's definitely going to be a tough matchup. Obviously, UMKC is going to look to bounce back. And now, with that statement victory against Bakersfield last week, UVU's got a little bit of a target on their back. They sent a shockwave through the conference with a 40-point, nearly 40-point victory, only allowing 43 points for Bakersfield. That's definitely a, a statement game and one that the whole conference has their eye on. Absolutely. And UMKC definitely has been preparing for this game for quite some time. And they've got a couple key players that Utah Valley needs to take a look at. And if you take a look at the screen, Roderick Robinson and Xavier Bishop have been leading in all categories virtually for this, season, for this team all season. Yeah, these guys get up and down the floor. They try to create offense out of their defense. So look to them to really pressure Brandon Randolph and Ben Nkwasen. We see Ben out there. And they really try to create just havoc defensively because they are so quick and if any turnovers or long rebounds those balls get laid in on the other side on the opposite side of the court taking a look at utah valley you got jake toolson one of the unsung leaders of this ball club who has totally reversed his game and isaac nielsen coming off the bench proving to be a force yeah you speak of his leadership i listened to your podcast early <laughs> on this week and i listened to jake's statements he said yeah we've won five straight but it's all about the next one and that tone is really what's going to resonate through the rest of his team and as we go into the keys of the game, getting these guys off to a good start early and not be comfortable. If we take a look at the keys to the game for UMKC, they got to they got to get out early. They got to get to the free throw line. They got to make the free throws count. They were at the free throw line last week, and they they missed probably 50% of their free throws, which hurt them. Ultimately, helped them lose that game. Yeah, if you look back at the Bakersfield game, we all were a little bit nervous when that halftime score was 24-23. Sure. And it was because Bakersfield's defensive mentality that they got off to early. And then tonight, UMKC is going to want to force their tempo and, as you said, get to the free throw line just by being aggressive to the basket. Taking a look on the other side for Utah Valley, the keys to the game, they've got to get out to a good start and they've got to maintain that pressure. Yeah, and what, to a good start, what does that mean to them? We've seen so many different first halves, it seems like, from Utah Valley that, again, we saw last week where we got nervous, and then they come and blow out of the water with a 50-point second half. And so I think a good start for them will be run their offense, get things flowing without AK, which we'll talk more about later on in the broadcast. Uh, it'll be important for them to get things flowing offensively early. Well, both teams will be looking to get a good start right after this. Commercial next, and then we got the anthem and the starting lineup to tip off right here on UVU TV. You're watching UVU TV. Utah has embodied the spirit of industry. From the first transcontinental railroad to the first department store, we've led the way. As part of the Murdoch Auto Team, we're proud to carry on this tradition. That's because when we say you are the heart of our business, it's more than just a slogan. It's our commitment to the values we all hold dear with no regrets. You've got to come see why you truly are the heart of our business. Murdoch Hyundai of Linden, part of the Murdoch Auto Team. Click MurdochHyundaiLinden.com. You're watching UVU TV. Starting lineups announced for both squads. We'll go with the visiting UMKC Roos first off. You got Xavier Bishop, Isaiah Ross, Jordan Giles, Broderick Robinson, and Aaliyah Leak. Your starting five for the Roos. And on Utah Valley side, those starters. Typical, Jake Toulson, Brandon Randolph, Connor Toulson, Kenneth Dogby, 
and a substitute tonight for that injured Nicole Demanyang, who suffered an ankle injury last week, and Isaac Nielsen. Now, Wolverine fans, you don't have to worry. It's not Isaac's first rodeo. He's done this many times. In fact, last year he started just about every game. So it's not going to be anything unfamiliar for Isaac Nielsen and company tonight. Head coach Mark Pope getting his team ready. Willie the Wolverine banging on the drums and getting the Wolverine faithful alive and ready tonight. Kareem Richardson and company getting the ruse in their Golden State Warrior-esque uniforms, donning the skyline of Kansas City, Missouri across their chest. In the blue and yellow, taking on the white and green of the home team. ACDC gracing the fans here in the background as well. And our Thursday matinee special from the UCC Center on UVU TV is just about underway. Isaac Nielsen, Alir Leak, and that one tipped back by Nielsen into the cozy hands of Brandon Randolph and the Utah Valley Wolverines. Utah Valley again in their home white and green. UMKC in their away blue and yellow. Jake Toulson, kick out to Connor Toulson. And why not get things started with the three-pointer from Connor Toulson? Those two work so well in tandem. Uh, Jake always has his vision out as he posts up. Lots of guys look to just score and go for themselves when they get the ball on the post. But Jake and the other big guys from the world can pass the ball so free. Leak taking a distance shot. Rimmed off and Isaac Nielsen gobbles up a first rebound. Jake Toulson out across the byline. Kicks back to Brandon Randolph. Connor Toulson surveys the defense, gives way to Randolph again. Toulson to Toulson back to Ogby. Ogby looking low for Isaac Nielsen. Instead, Nielsen comes out for the screen. Ogby splits the defense, floats to the rack, and finishes with the layup. Again, I think it's every game we talk about his length of stride and how one dribble, one power dribble he took at the free throw line, and then he's at the rim. And as you can tell from that last possession, guy who just can't stay with him. The rules bouncing along the perimeter. Step back shots, rimmed off. Isaiah Ross missed that attempt. I beg your pardon, that was Broderick Robinson. Robinson now 0 for 1 on the evening. Kenneth Abbey trying to take that two-step into the lane, get some contact, no foul call. And Robinson now. UMKC. Bishop to Ross. Ross down low to Giles. Giles kick out to Bishop. And Bishop with a three. Nice find there by Isaiah Ross with a cross-court pass to Bishop. And both teams getting going from the outside with three-point shots. Not uncharacteristic of both teams. UMKC averages nearly nine made three-point buckets a game, and Jake just short in his attempt. Wolverines average about seven. Here come the Ruse with Bishop. Bishop pivots and finds Ross. That'd be a combination to keep your eye on. Bishop and Ross in the top of the key. The teardrop floater by Ross. He had time to spare. The Utah Valley crowd made it seem like that he didn't. I don't know if he listened to them or if he really liked that teardrop shot. It almost made him more aggressive as they started to chant their countdown, and he took advantage of the open lane and just being aggressive. Brandon Randolph, 15 on the shot clock. Stutter step. Finds Kenneth Ogby in the corner with 10. Comes off the screen, Ogby. Toulson down, spin move. Easy money for Jake Toulson with the right hand. And yeah, between Kenneth and Jake, they get to the basket so easy. And the way that Coach Pope spaces and organizes his offense, meaning all guys are so out on the perimeters, we get a nice move and finish there by a Lear leak. But again, Jake and Kenneth have open lanes to the rim, and then they can not only pass, as we mentioned before, but finish so well. 
Isaac Nielsen now back up against Luke, gives way to Toulson. Toulson cuts in the lane, finds some space. Whistle blows. And they're going to call a foul on Jordan Giles down low, off the ball. And a couple substitutions now for UMKC. Marvin Nesbitt, along with Mo Ahmed, check on the ball game for the blue and yellow. 20 on the clock, Utah Valley. Connor Tulson with the quick trigger. Hey, back to back threes for Connor Tulson. Almost from the exact same spot. You can see the mentality that Connor is taking to this ball game here is Isaac Nelson takes the charge. And you know, before I go back to Jake, or excuse me, Connor, we get the timeout here. That's what Isaac brings. He sees the ball game so well and it sacrifices his body here. As you can see, he saw the drive early, steps over, doesn't try to contest the shot, takes that in the chest, and that's why Wolverines have a 10-7 lead right now. Utah Valley with that lead. We'll go into the break, up by three. We'll be right back with more on UVU TV. I knew that if we were gonna win games, we'd have to have fans in the seats. I'm not much of a marketing guy, but I have some friends that know a thing or two about it. All right, coach, this is all about face-to-face -face interaction. That was actually pretty good. If this whole basketball thing doesn't work out, you should give me a call. If you're looking to earn money this summer, stop by the Vantage Marketing booth on the concourse during our games, or visit ChooseVantage.com. What is it about the car shopping experience at Murdoch Hyundai that has everyone talking? Maybe it's the safety inspections or the car washes for life. It could be the price match guarantee or maybe it's just the way you're treated. Come fall in love in Linden, Logan and Murray at Murdoch Hyundai. Your no regrets dealer. You're watching UVU TV. Utah Valley University, campus, UCCU Center, UMKC 7, Utah Valley 10. Utah Valley, of course, playing without a cold demanding, which you see on the top of your screen right there. He had uh, his ankle wrapped up in ice during the pregame. He now has just a regular shoe on. A, a high ankle sprain was the diagnosis. There was word that he might be available this weekend. We don't know. But as of right now, Isaac Nielsen is doing a great job in the post. He took a, a charge just before we took the break to give Utah Valley this possession. Jake Toulson, coast to coast with the most for two. UMKC came out in a 1-2-2 two, two press that turned into a man-to-man -man press, and they denied Brandon the ball back. And Jake didn't need Brandon's help because he took it all the way to the rim and finished it. That's a deep three. Woo! Roderick Robinson. You mentioned his ability to score him between him and Xavier. Again, you mentioned in the pregame that they averaged nearly you know, 24 plus points a ball game between the two. And you can see why from that last three. And again, Jake being active in the post and in the paint gets his own rebound. You got now to Kenneth Dogby. Utah Valley with the full shot clock. Randolph now surveys. Randolph tried the inlet pass to Isaac Wilson, tipped away. Now here comes Ross and company. UMKC. Bishop comes off the screen. Ahmed Robinson, who just hit a deep three, goes behind the back, step back, in, kick back out. Seven on the shot clock. Bishop's got to do something. Bishop from long distance. Rims off. Isaac Nielsen. I listened to your podcast again. I mentioned that before. And I really enjoyed your interview with Brandon that you had. He mentioned how his game has developed and how much confidence he's gained in outside shooting. And one thing that I really like he attributed his success to is we get a three-point shot from Kenneth Ogby. 
It's just these guys' ability to score. We've seen Connor already knock down two threes. We see that shot there from Kenneth and his ability to get to the rim. He says these guys make it easy for him. And when he needs to score, he feels like he can get to the basket because these guys stretch and space the core so well. I thought it was a great uh, statement by him as a leader and point guard of this team. Seven on the shot clock for UMKC. Three, two, one. Count if it goes. Rims off. And Isaac Nielsen will gra grab, excuse me, his fourth rebound. Jake Toulson maybe tried to do a little too much on that one. Comes up just short. And a foul is called. Away from the wall, excuse me, away from the ball. That one is, will go against Brandon Randolph as we take a look here at the replay. Yeah, you can see that Brandon just on the back side there as he got beat on the drive. Kind of got him on the back with his arm. Just a little bit of lazy defense. Thought he could maybe poke that one out of bounds and just take it. That'll be Brandon's first. And again, with AK on the bench, not playing this game. Depth definitely you know, of concern, but they got Joel DeBerry, who's been playing such great minutes and pick up the production on the perimeter. They still don't want to get any fouls up there. It's a nice cut and drive. Solid ball movement by UMKC. Nesbitt Jr. with the layup. Thank you. Kisik. Can it not be in the corner? Had one from the other one. And he's going to try this out. He's good for both for three. UMKC on that position went to a 2-3 zone, something we saw the Wolverines struggle with early on in the season. So maybe some of these conference teams going back to early film as Wolverines the past few games have just shot guys out of any type of zone. And quick travel here by Tony Jackson knew knew what he got the whistle called for. <laughs> he motioned with the referee almost simultaneously that he traveled on that one. If you can see if we can catch it here on the replay, Tony Jackson there with the ball. When he travels, he starts to do the motion right there. <laughs> I've never seen that before. As At official, you gotta, yeah, you got to respect it as an official to appreciate that, you know, usually it's not the motion with you. You're either sure. getting pointed at or screamed at. So I'm sure the official pointed or appreciated him agreeing with the call. Jake Toulson now in led to Corey Calvert. Jarrell DeBerry, the man you just talked about. First touch, three-pointer from the corner. That's what they brought him in here to do, and he's been successful the past two games. You know, we used to see Lou Williams come off the bench. Still do. They still do for the Clippers. I'll hit him at 50, so maybe the various thing. I'm taking the same mentality. I get my minutes. They need me to come in there and score the basketball, and he's done that for the past three games. He's been eligible. Nice left-handed finish from Giles. Giles not backing down in the post among the trees. Ben Nkwasa with a different hairstyle. Jarrell DeBerry, now Jake Toulson back to Nkwasa. Inlet to DeBerry. DeBerry. Zach Nelson, father time, as they call it, with the spin, spin move, teardrop. Wolverine swarming on defense. Ball bounces all over, and that will go off. And we're going to take a break. Utah Valley at 23-14 from the UCCU Center. That'll be Utah Valley basketball when we return right here on UVU TV. say the devil is in the details. And in here, there are a lot of details. Flavor, color, texture, temperature, presentation. It all has to be flawless. Pressure? Maybe. But with Engage Learning, I get a lot of practice. And I'll bet your homework never tasted this good.
You're watching UVU TV. their first conference win so far. Coach Pope and company coming out of that timeout with the same lineup, no substitutions. Right now, however, taking a look at some stats for Utah Valley. Kenneth Dobby, three of four from the floor, two of two from distance. He leads the team and he leads the floor with eight points for both teams. Connor Toulson right behind him, two of two, both of those field goals, three pointers with six points. Isaac Nielsen, as we mentioned before, gobbling up those rebounds. He leads all players with four rebounds. And it's not only been the shooting that's created this nine-point lead here now with just 11 minutes to play in the first half. It's been how the Wolverines have come out defensively. And Speaking of shooting. gets his three-point game for himself. That's a good sign for Utah Valley and for Ben Nikwasa, who's been struggling as of late to get really started offensively since he's made that transfer and transition here to Division I. Corner three for UMKC. This one rims off. Tony Jackson had it go. A little short. Now Ben Nikwasa for Utah Valley gives way to Connor Toulson. Corey Calvert comes around the screen, gives right back to Connor Toulson, looking down for him. Zach Nelson. Zach Nelson with the spin move. Stuck. Ben Aquasa with a wide open lane. Misses the layup off of the back iron. Ben just a little long on that one as I think he was waiting for Alir Leak to come over and contest his shot. And Alir came late, but Ben had a wide open lane to the rim, uncontested, just a little long on the finger roll. Nice layup on the other end. Brandon McKissick. 26, 16, 10 point Utah Valley lead. 10 minutes to play in the first half. Terrell DeBerry, two for two so far. That rim right now must be the size of Texas. All everybody from the perimeter getting involved in the three point line. And again, as we mentioned before, Terrell DeBerry, this is only his fourth game back since being eligible. Sat out all last year and sat out half of this season. A transfer rule and a big block there by Connor Toulson. Connor Toulson of all people. He's no stranger to blocks. He doesn't get a lot of them. But he had length and the advantage on that one to get that defensive stop. And on the other end, tipped out of play by Corey Calvert. Now it'll be UMKC ball in front of their own bench. And you think on the other side of this, how, what is UK, UMKC doing to cause this drought? Why can't they get anything going offensively? And it's really all been created on the defensive end. They went to that 2-3 zone initially. That's what started this three-point splurge, so to speak, for the Wolverines. And it's kind of really been an impact, negative impact on them offensively as you've seen their body language really deflate. You mentioned Utah Valley's hot streak from distance right now. They're shooting seven of eight, 88% right now, as we take a look at the replay from that last possession. Gerald DeBerry. Sizing up his opportunity. And there was the foul call. Ben Nikwasa looking for some help on the inbound. And they're going to call an offensive foul in the key. This one is going to go against Connor Toulson. Yeah, there's a lot of movement there on that action on the end out of bounds play. Connor came across and set a screen for Isaac and maybe just held that screen for too long as he adjusted his feet. We'll get a replay here. You can see Connor kind of being held there on the bottom half of the screen and maybe just leaned a little bit too much with that left side of his body to extend the screen, and that's what the official saw. Brandon Randolph set to check back in at the next moment for Utah Valley. Right now, UMKC trying to find an offensive spark with 16 on the shot clock. Ahmed triple team down low. Jarrell DeBerry called for the reach. Mm -hmm. 
Ben Kwasa and Jarrell DeBerry step off. Jake Toulson, Brandon Randolph check back in for Utah Valley. Isaac Wilson guarding the inbound. All seven foot of them. Nice hands by Ahmed to corral that inbounds pass. 13 on the clock. Bishop off the Ahmed screen. Pulls the trigger, rims off. Connor Toulson in Utah Valley. Corey Calvert now past the midcourt marker. Connor Toulson wide open from top of the arc. Three shots, three threes, nine points for Connor Toulson, and a timeout for UMKC. You can see here as Corey just brought up the ball and instead of reversing it over to Jake Toulson, Connor left wide open. You can see how deep he is just inside the logo and when you've already made two that haven't touched the rim, they all feel like free throws to him. If you look back at that replay, Con Corey Calvert was looking in the corner for Jake Tilson and Jake motion with his hand, give it over there to Connor. And you, you've said it a handful of times throughout this season, as soon as Connor Tilson steps foot on the court, he's pretty much in range. Right, he is. He's one of those shooters that has such great strength with his legs. He can shoot a jump shot from, again, as we saw from the logo here, which is so difficult to do to have the strength to elevate over defenders and be able to create a window to get a shot off. And he definitely has a special gift to do so. Utah Valley up 32 to 16 with 8.30 left to play in the first half. Brandy Crow alongside Holton Hunsaker. Thank you for joining us here on UVU TV. Tony Jackson and to Ahmed. Ahmed mishandles, goes out of play. Yeah, just nothing going right for UMKC out of a timeout. They wanted to get something going down low, so they go to their big guy, Ahmed. And just off of one dribble, just maybe trying to do a little bit too much. Dribbles off his foot, trying to go baseline with very little room to operate. And that pick up the now fifth turnover for UMKC. Utah Valley, their last six possessions on a 6-0 run. Single digits on the shot clock. Jake Toulson might have to pull the trigger. Four seconds, three seconds. He's going to stop. He's going to pop. Rebound by Bishop. Here comes UMKC pushing it up court. Nice hesitation move. Rimmed off Isaac Nielsen. Fifth rebound. Brandon Randolph, head full of steam. Kick out. Back pass. Connor Toulson continues his perfection streak. 4-4 four, four from the floor. This one inside the arc this time. And I really like that you mentioned Jake on that last possession when he pointed over to Connor and pointed that he was wide open for his shot. And on that time, Jake tried to even make an extra pass to Connor, knowing that he has the hot hand right now is Robinson again. Who else? And again, going back to Jake and just his maturity and basketball IQ to continue to feed who's hot on your team. Doesn't have any ego. He's not thinking about getting his numbers or anything. Just wants to try and win the ball game. And so when someone's feeling good about their shot and their game, keep giving them the ball and let them uh, take you home. Jake Toulson, hesitation, runs into a wall in the post. Jordan Giles. All six foot seven, 225 pounds of him. Runs right into Jake Toulson with the hesitation. Jake Toulson will go to the line after this. Utah Valley on top, 34-19 on UVU TV.
watching UVU TV. Utah Valley Cheer Squad on the floor, continuing to bring the good vibes for this Utah Valley team and the Utah Valley crowd. Utah Valley on top, 34 to 19. 641 to play in the first. Brandon Crow alongside Holden Hunsaker. Thank you for letting us be a part of your Thursday evening here on UVU TV and the Wax Sports Digital Network. Jake Toulson at the line to shoot two. He was fouled on his way up to the rack by Jordan Giles. Right before we took a break, Jake Toulson right now, four points, five assists. And make that five points and five assists. In about 11 minutes of play. But Holden, as you were saying before we went to break, it's the little things that people are not noticing that are making the big difference tonight. Yeah, just as you had mentioned before, Jake just knows where everybody is at on the court, knows where they're supposed to be as he knocks down his second free throw. And that takes, it's not only a gift, but it takes so much time and preparation that he puts in into watching film, into studying the playbook, and then thinking basketball. And Jake is definitely a high IQ basketball player and something he prides himself on. And you can see even defensively how his eyes are always, his head are always on a swivel. He knows where guys at, he knows where everyone's supposed to be. Five on the shot clock for UMKC. Connor Tozer with the sticky hands. Gonna take it himself, stripped away this time by Giles. Giles says, hey, I can do that too. UMKC. Deep, deep shot. Rimmed off, and that one missed by Robinson. And Randolph gonna put the brakes on temporarily. 36-19, less than six to play in the first. Let's go, come on, Laura! That turnover by Connor in transition was only the Wolverines' third turnover of the ball game, whereas UNKC has four, but of those four turnovers, Wolverines have turned those into eight points, and that really has been something we've emphasized together as we've talked, and Zach has to force up the shot here and gets it back. Lucky bounce by Utah Valley. He finds the ball right back into his own hands. And he gets fouled by Isaiah Ross on the way up. As we see the replay here, that one just cannot be handled by UMKC. And you see the foul come across Zach's arm. And Zach smartly just goes up for the shot. Unfortunately, just a little long on his first free throw attempt. Zach Nelson needs to average about 8 to 10 points still to, to finish this season with a career of 1,000 points. Makes the second free throw. He's feeling the pressure. And with that free throw going in, that's the 12th bench point, which is probably about the average bench production that the Warriors have had this season. And so we've emphasized, we've talked about, we've heard Coach Pope talk about the need of production coming off the bench in depth. And they've definitely stepped up tonight. Jordan Giles stepping up tonight for UMKC. Kenneth Dogby. Jake Toulson. This one ripped straight from his hand by Brandon McKissick. McKissick with the acrobatic layup on the other end. I don't know how he made that one fall. What a tough finish going with his off hand to finish that one with a little bit of a, an inside off hand finish is extremely tough with all your momentum not going up to the rim and getting a short three point ball there by Jake as he has passed up a couple of those before finally decided to go ahead and take one and not a bad shot at all as he was wide open for the three. Giles again trying to make something happen. This one falls right to the bread basket of Bishop. Excuse me, sorry, Roderick Robinson. And that one will go against Jake Toulson. Take a look at the replay. Robinson comes up. Yeah, you can tell the whistle came late as everyone turned their head at the end of that replay, and Jake just kind of grazed him with his body. There's a lot of contact, but enough for the force to force make a call. Mm -hmm. 
Robinson misses the first free throw. That's a good look at those new uniforms for this season. UNKC going old school Golden State as he makes the second. Beautiful skyline of a wonderful city, Kansas City. That this team and head coach Kareem Richardson hold very high in their hearts and are proud to wear across their chest. Right now they trail 24-37. Kenneth Dobby with 15 on the shot clock for Utah Valley. Trying to create some space, gives way to Jarrell DeBerry. Brandon Randolph wide open for three. Isaac gets a hand on it, but ultimately tips it out of play. And it'll be UMKC basketball when we return. Utah Valley still on top, however, 37-24. Rue basketball right after this here on UVU TV. I don't think of myself as just an undergrad. Okay, so I'm a sophomore but I'm at UVU where it's all about engaged learning. Leading a project on DNA research, I don't have to wait for grad school to get this kind of experience. As a UVU student, I guess you could say engaged learning is in my DNA. In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent. Glad you're okay, Sarah. We'll take care of everything. And the company that stands behind them. Thanks so much for your help. No problem. Auto Owners Insurance. Neil Dastrup Insurance, your local independent auto owners insurance agency, supports UVU Athletics. You're watching UVU TV. Fathers and some sons, daughters enjoying it. The little future Wolverine cheerleader, member of the dance team in the works. Utah Valley on top, 37-24. Your points leaders right now for Utah Valley, Connor Toulson with 11, Kenneth Abbey with eight. Jake Toulson with six, Jake Toulson six points, five assists as well. So as much as Jake is putting the ball through the hoop, He's dishing those dimes to his teammates. 11 assists in total on the team, for the team on the night. So 11 of the 13 main baskets have been assisted. Utah Valley not greedy with the basketball at all, and it's showing. 3.30 left to play in the first half. The ball all over the floor. Utah Valley with the big hands, Isaac Nielsen Looking like a tight end. In the key, steals that one away. Now here comes Utah Valley. Brandon Randolph with 20. I'd love to see a statistic on how many possessions that Isaac's in the game and how many times he gets his hand on the two scores. with a tough drive for the Rams, showing us already how he can fill it up from the outside of the perimeter and now able to take it to the rim as well. Another turnover for UMKC. Utah Valley with that last bucket broke a three and a half minute stretch where they were scoreless. So with about two, 245 left in this first half and see if Utah Valley can continue to put the pressure on or if UMKC can get a defensive stop and lead to something offensively. Seven seconds on the clock, five seconds. Kenneth Dogby, spot up jumper, rims off, no good. And McKissick comes away with the rebound for UMKC. That last possession, just a little bit of a broken play as they try to set up a double stagger. Initially another turnover. Another turnover here, making up for that last possession. And Joel DeBerry takes to the rim and Leak says, not tonight. Not tonight. Going back to that possession before kind of shows how they're still trying to get Joel DeBerry 
in the offense a little bit. Whenever they go to their motion offense, of course, he is such a great basketball player that he can fill his way in. But running sets and things, still getting used to what the team's got going. Gerald Barry gets the rebound, misses that putback. Almost missed a foul as well. UMKC out the run, Marco Smith. Now ball moving around the perimeter. Robinson. Kick out. Tony Jackson misses. Isaac Nielsen with another rebound to add to his total. Six on the evening so far. 90 seconds left in the first half. Hesitation by Brandon Randolph. Dish to Isaac Nielsen. We've seen that over and over again. Brandon giving up a good shot. He had a wide open three from the corner. A little pump fake got by his guy and created a layup for his teammate. Marco Smith. Inlet to Leak. Leak working on Isaac Nielsen. Leak trying to create some space. Rebound and Brandon Randolph kick out to Terrell DeBerry. Terrell DeBerry draws the foul in the act. And that'll go against Marco Smith. As we take a look at the replay. Nice outlet pass by Brandon Randolph to hit Jarrell DeBerry in stride. And you can see initially when Brandon got that outlet pass, his head goes immediately up the court. He has such great vision and ball control to see the court. And as we mentioned before, he's always looking for his teammates. How can he make guys better around him, give the ball in position for them to be successful? DeBerry misses that first free throw. Right now, DeBerry sitting at eight points, three of five from the floor, two of two from distance. He connects the second, nine points. Team's second highest score so far. Not only in the first half, but in the, in the whole game. Giles, the strong drive gets fouled. That'll go against Jarrell DeBerry. That'll be his second personal foul. Giles coming off that screen, gets the pass. Sees a crease. Jarrell DeBerry coming across your screen at the last second. Gets some contact. Pretty impressive way that Giles protected that basketball. As he started to drive from the rim, he cut that thing like a running back does and made sure no one was tripping that over. Giles misses the free throw. About an eight and a half second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. 42-24, Utah Valley on top bid. Giles makes the second. Two fresh substitutions. Brandon McKissick. Alir Leak. See what Utah Valley elects to do on this final possession. Ben Nkwasa. Jake Toulson. Nkwasa. Rims off. Isaac Nielsen with the rebound and the putback. They're going to call goaltending against Leak. That ball was on the downslide. Quasa spots up. Rims off. Isaac does well to win that one in, in the air. Got to tip your hat up to Leak. No way I could go up and down and then back up again that quickly. Yeah, you give him credit too for not giving up on the play. He got beat on the defensive rebound initially. Tried to make up for it with a block shot. Isaac, who always catches that ball and goes up with it immediately, doesn't waste any time playing around with it. Just too quick for him. Six on the shot clock to end the first half. Giles doing what he's been doing all first half, finishing strong at the rim. And that's how we go into the break. Utah Valley on top, 44-27. Utah Valley shooting the blistering 8 of 14 from beyond the arc. 
We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back to recap the first half and give you some stats right after this here on UQ TV. I hate math. I can't count how many times I've heard people say that. And as a math teacher, I take it personally. So, while working on my master's at UVU, I developed ways to help kids not hate math. Does engaged learning make a difference? You do the math. There is so much to celebrate in life. From the smallest of hands to the victories of youth and precious occasions with family and friends, sharing unforgettable moments. Continue accomplishing your goals and celebrate success at Utah Valley University. Apply by August 1st for fall semester. You're watching UVU TV. He's got two rebounds and two assists. The other leaders, Ken Adabi with eight, Jarrell DeBerry with nine. Utah Valley was on fire holding for a while. They were seven of eight from three, and then they, they missed a couple. They finished the, the first half eight of 14, which is not bad. But I think the point of emphasis that we've been making all season long, which we've been seeing come out in full force tonight, is that, six, that 15 bench points. Yeah, and it's been Jarrell DeBerry that got these guys going. We get a couple replay clips here of Jake Toulson, who started the game off, getting everybody else involved. And then Kenneth Ogby, who we've mentioned time and time again, gets to the rim so easily. And UMKC give them credit, too. They got off to a good start to put pressure on the Wolverines, but it was just the shooting on the perimeter that uh, really spaced this game. And this is the second game, back-to-back -back games, that the Wolverines have kept their opponents within that 20 point range, only giving up 27 points this first half. We'll see if you can, KC can come back in this one as uh, the Wolverines really dominating that first half. UMKC was struggling, but they were able to get some offense going. Giles towards the end of the first half, finished that first half with seven points, three or four from the floor, and he proved to be one of the most efficient and effective players for that Rue offense. But Utah Valley still on top, 44-27. And it'll be interesting to see what happens at the beginning of the second half, and it'll be interesting to see what adjustments are made for either team in the locker room right now. But we'll take a break, play you some commercials, and give our advertisers their time, and then we'll be right back with more from UVU TV. Looking to spend that birthday money, Tyler? I'm just not sure which one to get. Well, they are both pretty cool. But saving some of that money would be pretty cool, too. Yep. When's the right age to teach your children how to save and spend money wisely? Right now. With the Be Money Smart program only at Utah Community Credit Union. Inspiring smart decisions. Life is about moments. If you fight, I fight. If I fight, we fight. You be there and watch what I do when the bell rings. Do you have that real look in your eye? That when you look at yourself in the mirror, you can ask yourself this question. Did I give everything I got? Did I lay it all on the line? Or am I cheating myself? What'd you say, please? Whatever you 
you're going to do, claim it. Leave your mark on this world. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? It doesn't matter your situation in life. No matter your interest. Whether your first choice or second chance. There's a place for you. Place for you. Place for you at UVU. Place to engage, to rise, to succeed. To become. In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes. It doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent. Glad you're okay, Sarah. We'll take care of everything. And the company that stands behind them. Thanks so much for your help. No problem. Auto Owners Insurance. Neil Dastrup Insurance, your local independent auto owners insurance agency, supports UVU Athletics. It's fitting that the Ira A. Fulton Library at Utah Valley University has this gallery at its entrance. This award-winning artwork is called Roots of Knowledge. It's largely reflective of the UVU approach to education, engaged, serious, and inclusive. Each piece is vital in its own right, and taken as an expansive whole, these tens of thousands of pieces add up to create a spectacular work of art which tell the history of humanity's search for understanding. Speaking of expansion, many new buildings and programs have taken shape at UVU in the last year. We broke ground on the new V Basketball Center and opened it just 15 months later. It'll be both a big recruiting tool for future Wolverines and give our student athletes a competitive winning edge. We love putting the skills of our students in the spotlight on center stage. We broke ground on the Norda Center for the Performing Arts and construction of this incredible facility is well underway. And the Melissa Nellison Center for Autism demonstrates that our commitment to meeting the needs of our community is of paramount importance. Housed in the Cole Nellison Building, this program is a unique answer to a prevalent need in our community and state to develop resources and practical solutions to the daily lived reality of those on the autism spectrum and their caregivers. In this, UVU is already becoming a national leader. We're very inclusive at UVU. When you come here, you can expect a rigorous university experience alongside vocational training. We believe in great teaching and learning to help our students accomplish their goals. Other highlights of the year, opening of the renovated Rebecca Lockhart Arena, the new V Social Media Command Center, additional classroom space at Thanksgiving Point in the heart of Silicon Slopes, and the release of an exciting master plan. Utah Valley University is committed to expanding opportunities. The process to create Roots of Knowledge was expansive and detailed. It didn't happen overnight. A UVU education is like that, requiring ongoing attention and devotion to academic study and skill development. With talented faculty, staff, and administrators guiding us, and amazing opportunities awaiting. That is why UVU is the place for us, and you. Who knew that a 2009 Woodbury School of Business graduate would end up being the heart and soul of Utah's first and most successful food truck? Adam Terry is the mastermind behind the Waffle Love restaurant and food truck phenomena that is taking Utah by storm. Featuring a soft, sugary waffle of goodness topped with the sweetest fruits in season, the richest whipped cream, and a selection of ooey gooey sauces, Waffle Love was born, mostly out of Terry's passion for creating the perfect waffle. My passion was making incredible food for people. And so I'm the type of guy that on a weekend, um, I'd be finding obscure ingredients for some crazy recipe to make for my friends and invite them all over. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what I decided to do. So I went for waffles. So these waffles, is a, what we sell at Waffle is a Belgian Liège waffle. And it's a waffle that's made out of a dough, not a batter. Belgian pearl sugar, which we import from Belgium. It's a, it's a time consuming, labor intensive waffle making process. It's not like what you're used to at home. So I wanted to bring that sort of thing, that kind of magic to people. Necessity was the other mother of waffle love invention when Terry was laid off while raising and providing for his young family. He had always been attracted to the creativity of cooking and just needed the perfect opportunity to make his dream a reality. The door opened when Terry spotted a rundown food truck that just needed a little tender loving care. His wife and daughter created the unique Waffle Love logo and design, which became the business signature. 
Waffle Love's first day in business yielded just 13 waffle sales. But thanks to his wife leading a viral social media movement, Waffle Love became wildly popular. There were no food trucks in Utah County at the time, right? And uh, so we needed, so I decided I was gonna do a, a Belgian Liège waffle food truck. It was gonna be the best waffle that people had ever had. I went to work perfecting the recipe and making it perfect. I think it was like my 15th try with my family. You know, they're probably all sorts of sick and tired of my waffles and uh, I finally nailed it. So that was, that was an awesome moment. Once I got that down, I ordered the waffle irons from Belgium and I was all in. What advice does Terry have for future Woodbury entrepreneurs? Follow your heart and do what you know you're passionate about. Then go for it. It was great to learn all the different aspects of business. I learned a lot of things that helped me see a business from the big picture. Terry's success story and passion for providing delicious foods certainly won't end with Waffle Love, and he promises there are more scrumptious adventures ahead. To find out when Waffle Love will be visiting a neighborhood near you, follow them on Facebook or Instagram. For more information on Woodbury's entrepreneurship program, visit www.uvu.edu backslash Woodbury. You're watching UVU TV. Utah Valley at the half right now, 44-27 on top of UMKC. Teams back out onto the court, getting a little warmed up before they start second half play. Brandon Crow alongside Holton Hunsaker, thank you for joining us here on the UVU TV and the Wax Sports Digital Network. Holton, what was one of the things that stood out to you in that first half? You saw Utah Valley coming out strong with the bench play. Huge turnover ratio. There was a lot of good things that they were doing tonight. I mean, the first thing I emphasized before we went to that halftime break was the level that they're playing at defensively. Uh, after the post-game talk on uh, last Saturday against Bakersfield, Coach Pope emphasized toughness, 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 and how do you establish toughness as always done at the defensive end. And that's what they've shown tonight, only giving up 27 points. Wolverines have forced eight turnovers and have only given up nine rebounds. And so they've kind of led in every statistical category, especially defensively, which has really been what Coach Pope has emphasized. A couple of the key players for Utah Valley in that first half. Connor Toulson was four of four from the floor. Three of three from three. Had a nice, easy layup. But Jake Toulson, he was doing work. Five assists, six points. He was the real facilitator of that Utah Valley offense in the first half. But Jarrell DeBerry coming off the bench. A couple of huge three-pointers. Got a couple layups. And it'll be interesting to see how Utah Valley and company respond. But we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with the second half and more for right here from the UCC Center, Norm, Utah. Good sportsmanship isn't defined by a scoreboard. It isn't defined by how high you can jump or how fast you can run. Good sportsmanship is all about character. It is about doing your best for your coaches and teammates. It's about having respect for your opponents, the officials, and the fans. Good sportsmanship is winning with class and losing with dignity. It is fair play, perseverance, and team spirit. Good sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are, are the Western, Western Athletic Knights. You're watching UVU TV. All right, Utah Valley. Head coach Mark Pope, assistant coach Chris Burgess, fired up for the second half. Utah Valley on top, big 44 27. 
Willie the Wolverine getting the crowd hyped up as we begin second half play from the UCCU Center in Orem, Utah. Brandon Crow alongside Holton Hunsaker thanking you for letting us be a part of your evening tonight on UPU TV. Kareem Richardson and company trying to get some offensive spark plugs going for the Ruse of UMKC. Utah Valley, of course, in their white and green trim, customary home uniform. UMKC in their away blue and yellows. Utah Valley, should they win tonight, would improve to 2-0 in conference play. UMKC would move to 0-2. Xavier Bishop and company have a lot more to say. 20 minutes more to say. See how they respond in this second half as they start off with the ball. Giles, kick out in the corner. Bishop, now Giles. Stolen away by Brandon Randolph. Nice bounce pass, Kenneth Ogby in lane. Offensive foul. Kenneth Ogby always very animated. Trying to plead his case, but I don't think he's going to win that one. Yeah, I couldn't see if Leak had both of his feet outside that circle. I think that's what Kenneth was expecting as he went in for that one. We've been spoiled the last two games and we've seen you know, amazing dunks and finishes by Kenneth Ogby with open lanes to the rim and he's trying to go for another special one there. Good ball movement on the perimeter. Giles for three. Comes up short, Brandon Randolph back-to-back -back defensive rebounds to start the second half. Randolph motioning for Isaac Nielsen to come in. Instead pulls away. Now perimeter work by Utah Valley. And Dobby, a little hesitation. His ankle gave way, a scary moment. He's nimble enough to walk away. Stutter step as we take a look at the replay. Splits the defense. Ooh, that could have been dangerous. Yeah, as we saw Kenneth just kind of step on the foot of Giles as he was going to the rim. Kenneth's career up until this point has been plagued with injuries, but since coming to Utah Valley, he's been primarily healthy. It's been great to see him, you know, progress throughout the season, start of the season with that collarbone. Hasn't set him back a little bit. Kenneth Abbey sinks the second free throw, putting his point total tonight in double digits with 10. Right behind Connor Toulson with 11. Connor Toulson had a great start, been fairly quiet for the majority of the second part of that first half and the beginning of the second half. Isaac Nielsen going to get called with the foul. He was leaning in a little too much on the leader league. The first three possessions for UMKC have been attempts to get guys going in the paint. And as you had mentioned, one of your keys in the game to get to the free throw line as UMKC forced to call a timeout to avoid the five second violation. UMKC will take a timeout. It is not immediate timeout, so we will stay here as well. 18.41 left to play here in the second half. Taking a look again at the statistics for you. Nobody in double digits for UMKC at the moment. The closest person right now is Jordan Giles, followed closely by Broderick Robinson. Both of them have seven points apiece. And then after that, it goes down. McKissick with four. Bishop three, Ross and Lee both with two. Meanwhile, for Utah Valley, Connor Toulson, Kenneth Abbey, 11 points, 10 points, respectively. Jarrell DeBerry, nine points. Jake Toulson with six points. Interesting to note, Jake Toulson, I believe, started the second half on the bench still. Coach Pope trying to spread the wealth with the minutes played you could say, with, the, with his team at the moment. Utah Valley shooting 75% from the floor. All right, a very special happy birthday. 
And as you look on the other side of the ball, what can UMKC do to get some type of momentum to try and get back into this ball game, or what can they do to get better from this point forward? You gotta forget about the first half, forget about the score, and just try and go out and win this second half so they can take some type of momentum going into their next game in conference play, which is really tough to do. And they came out, they tried to establish themselves down low in the paint, but they have not been able to establish any type of presence defensively as the Wolverines have been able to get anything they want on the offensive end. And so we'll see if UMKC can make any adjustments defensively to try and make a run at this game. There's a deep three from Lee. Big rebound by Clark Tuesday continues to maintain his dribble and gives way to Brandon Randolph. Randolph triple teams. They will call a foul on Roger Robinson. That'll be his first personal foul. Brandon able to avoid that triple team there as he's able to keep his balance low to the ground. Connor kind of brought his defender on top of him instead of going off the other side. And a nice setup back right there. And you mentioned time and time again how the offense flows continually through Jake Toulson. And you see why is that was a tough, tight pass for him to make. That is Jake Toulson's sixth assist on the evening. Jake Toulson looking to go coast to coast, draws the foul against Giles. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. Jake Toulson, like you mentioned before, always with his head on a swivel, like Brandon Randolph going down the court. Surveys that he has an opportunity. Leaned in, got the foul from Giles as he connects with that first free throw. That'll be his eighth point on the night. Again, six assists and two rebounds. Smile and a grin on his face, which is something the Wolverine, Wolverine fans love to see. Because when he's smiling, you know that he's at his best. And you can accept that as you're up 23 points right now and everything going your way. You always want to kind of keep an edge there as a player and not get comfortable. But you know, again, they've played so well tonight. Jake especially got everybody involved, shooting the ball well for himself, and definitely enjoyed that uh, moment there at the free Long distance connection by Robinson, something that we haven't seen him do since early on in this ball game in the first half. A dangerous pass. Connor Tulson this way, Kenneth Dobby with a dish to Isaac Nielsen who gets fouled. Yeah, that caused it to go against Xavier Bishop. And as you mentioned, Coach Mew and KC off the bench in a hurry saying that he traveled there initially before taking that hit. But again, I think that push from Xavier Bishop caused that travel. But they're going to give Isaac two free throws here and say he's going up for a shot. Isaac Nielsen connects. Isaac Nielsen not as productive offensively, but he just does what the team needs him to do right now. He has seven total rebounds. And now six points. So he's closing in on yet another double-double in his career here at Utah Valley. And Isaac's just always so consistent. We've mentioned how he's always in that talk of a double-double. And sometimes he gets the minutes to do so, sometimes he's not. He hasn't pounded in any way this season, takes the role, accepted this role, and steps in and plays big minutes when he's called upon. Jake Toulson gets called for the foul. Brady McKissick maybe had a step or two on him. I'm not sure what happened there. Here's a giveaway. Connor Toulson with an open lane. Nice finish. At the cut, 4-11. Bishop spinning all around. Jake Toulson with another turnover, another opportunity for Utah Valley. Kenneth Ivey stripped away. Good hands by McKissick and UMKC. And here we go. Back and forth, Utah Valley. Kenneth Ivey in the corner. Somebody's going to try and maintain possession. 
Another three-point connection missed by Bishop in the corner. And Utah Valley will slow it down with 6.25 left to play on top, 54 to 30. A couple wild possessions there by both teams. Wolverine not able to convert and transition off of those turnovers, but didn't give up defensively. Every time all five guys got back, stopped the break by UMKC, and just short there on the pull up by Brandon. You kind of see both teams a little bit gassed there after the last sequence. Robinson tried to hit that connection pass outlet in the corner. That'll go out of play on UMKC. And we'll take a break as well. 54-30 for Utah Valley. And we will return right after this. You're watching UVU TV. Utah Valley on top right now, 54 to 30. Wolverine Faithful now in full force tonight, Thursday in January. And might I say, a not very cold or not very very damp Thursday in January, which I am all in favor of. Head coach Mark Pope and company coming out of a timeout with a little bit of a different look. They got Ben Nkwasa on the floor. Jake Toulson remains with two fouls. Isaac Nielsen, Kenneth Dobby, and Connor Toulson. And a fresh face for UMKC, Robert Nahr checks in. The redshirt senior. Again, as, you, as we usually go over statistics, they're coming out of timeouts. One that stood out to me and one that you don't see very often is the Wolverines have held UMKC as they show a press here to zero offensive rebounds this game. They've only given up 11 defensive rebounds in total, but haven't given up an offensive rebound. Give credit to Isaac feeling a big gap there for AK and Kenneth Ogby. Love those corner three-point shots, almost automatic for them. Beautiful ball movement for Utah Valley to set that three-point shot up by Kenneth Dogby. Now on top, 57-30. UMKC. This one picked off by Kenneth Dogby as he pulls back the reins. Jake Toulson calling for it in the corner. Now he pulls back. Connor Toulson with the hard drive, finds the lane. He's so good at cutting through that defense. As you saw, he takes one hard dribble to his right to set up like he's going to go hand that ball off to the guy in the corner as we get a quick whistle away from the ball and an offensive foul. That one's going to go against Tony Jackson. He threw a little bit of an elbow there to Jake to free himself up. But going back to that last drive by Connor, he does that at least two to three times a game, and so much film is out there. You think guys would catch on, but with so much action, that goes on the perimeter of Coach Pope's offense is hard to time it, and he always sets it up at the right moment and always finishes well through. Ben Nkwasa, Jarrell DeBerry. Nkwasa, count it! And one for Ben. Must be the new hairstyle. You see here, he sets up that handoff as well, and just that little hesitation is enough to get his guy to free and able to create that angle to the rim, get body contact, and nice touch there off the glass by Ben. 
Isaac Nielsen checks out what could possibly be maybe his final minutes of this game. Utah Valley on top by 31. Zach Nelson checks in for him, along with Corey Calvert, Jarrell DeBerry, Connor Toulson, and Ben Nikwasa. Giles passes up the three, goes into the lane. Foul's called against Zach Nelson. Seems like every time Zach Nelson gets into the ball game, there's whistles all around. <laughs> Luckily, it's only his first tonight. Yeah, Zach has actually he played a great first half, stayed with it himself. Ran the offense and did what Coach Pope needed to do. Actually got a couple of finishes around the rim as he went directly up with it. So nice to see Zach have a bounce back game here as he struggled a little bit later. Three seconds on the clock for UMKC. Desperation heave. Rimmed off. Rebounded by Corey Calvert. KC kind of finding themselves having a, a second half like Bakersfield did the other night. They've only scored, I believe, three points this second half. And Zach is not able to finish that one. I think this one will go against Jarrell DeBerry. Still no official call. All right, there the official call comes from the officials. As you can see from there, Jarrell just not exactly set to take that one to the chest. He was there in plenty of time, but just kind of awkwardly got hit. A little bit unexpectedly, I think, on his end. Thought maybe, you know, Brandon McKissick was going to go up quicker than he did. And as he was slowly backpedaling back, he actually picked up that third foul for Jarrell. Kenneth Hoppe checks back in for Connor Tulson. And McKissick makes the second. Kansas City, however, on the offensive side, no field goals in the last three and a half minutes. 13.56 left to play. Corey Calvert stops, gives away to Kenneth Dogby from the corner. He loves that corner shot. That's been his shot all season. And that coming off of a quick sprint there on the bench as uh, Connor came back out of the game for him and uh, didn't take that long for him to get back into his game. Nice jump step. Can't finish at the rim. And here comes Corey Calvert for Utah Valley. And Nkwasa. Crossover dribble gives low Zach Nelson. Somehow finds a way to put that up and in. Father Time going through the history books. Comes away with the magic trick. Terrific catch by Zach as two UMKC defenders closed on him. You can see Giles with his hands all over him. Zach able not only to catch that one, but to go up and finish it. Sixty-six, thirty-one, Utah Valley on top. Thirteen minutes to play here in Orem, Utah. And Zach Nelson makes the free throw. Complete the three-point play. And that gives him seven points on the evening. So he's closing in on that average that he needs. Nar, good ball move from UMKC in the corner. 4-3, Steve Dully. And that breaks the four and a half minute scoreless streak by the rules of UMKC. 67-34, Utah Valley on top. Ben Nkwasa with the yo-yo dribble. Gives back to Corey Calvert. Spot up three, he rims off. And a nice drive and finish at the other end. This time by Bishop. So a quick five points for UMKC. That was a nice job by UMKC on that time. Taking a long three-point miss and turning that into a layup on the other end. And Jarrell DeBerry with a quick step back three there. You can kind of feel a little bit of a sluggish run here by the Wolverines as they get this one to go their way. See if they can turn something into points there in transition. Jarrell DeBerry calling for it in the corner. Kenneth 
dive in now to Ben Nkwasa. Nice pass to Zach Nelson, who's triple team down low. Gives way to Darrell DeBerry with a nice finish. They're going to call a defensive foul. Darrell DeBerry, no signal yet if the bucket counted. The official does indeed count the bucket. Darrell DeBerry at the line to finish the three point play. When we return right after this at UVU TV. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life, no matter your interests. From innovative exercise science, outdoor recreation to STEM programs, there's a place for you at Utah Valley University. A place to engage, to rise, to succeed, to become. watching UVU TV. The Utah Valley Spirit Squad out in full force, continuing to the Utah keep the Utah Valley and Wolverine spirits up. Utah Valley on top 69-36 with 11.48 to play here in Orem, Utah from the UCCU Center. Brandon Crow alongside Holton Hunsaker, thanking you for letting us be a part of your Thursday evening here on UVU TV. This is a replay. A nice finish by Xavier Bishop to cap a quick 5-0 spurt by UMKC. Jarrell DeBerry got fouled right before we went to break with a layup similar to what Bishops was just shown except under his own hoop. And he will step to the line to finish the three-point play. And he does. So Jarrell DeBerry adds to his point total now 12 points on the evening. Four of seven from the floor, two of three from three, and two of three from the free throw line. And all of that company, just 10 minutes of play, Jarrell has made Every second he's been out there productive, not only offensively as he got going early with a couple three-pointers, but he's been very active defensively as Isaac Nelson's going to get called for a slap across the hand, it seems. I thought he maybe got that one clean. As Robert Nahr went up for that last layup, the official under the basket saw that Isaac got him on the hand. We'll see as we maybe they're on the follow through, but clean initially on top of the ball and just enough to send Nara to the free throw line. And he connects on the second as well, so he's perfect two of two from the free throw line. 38 to 70, Utah Valley still on top. Good pressure defense by UMKC. Connor Toulson skies up for that board. Jarrell DeBerry, corner to money. That's been the spot in the second half between Kenneth Ogby, Connor Toulson, and now Jarrell DeBerry getting one to go from that corner. That one's been automatic for Wolverine in the second half. Back you got to Marco Smith. Marco Smith with the drive and the kick. Jarrell DeBerry trying to get the steal. Ball all over the floor. Shot clock still at eight. And this one's going to run out of play. They're going to say it was tipped off of Utah Valley, however. I thought initially Connor Toulson had kicked that one with his foot, but the officials are going to say it just tipped out of bounds. So the shot clock does not reset as if it would with a kickball. So UMKC with a short shot, clock, short shot clock, only seven to go. And they're going to give it back to the Wolverines as Marco Smith gets called for the push off. 10.50 left to play from 
or Muton, the UCC center. Jarrell DeBerry inbounds to Ben Nikwasa. Seems to me at the moment that head coach Mark Pope for Utah Valley has his certain particular players that he wants to get specific minutes and he wants to see something specific from as Jarrell DeBerry misses that layup rebounded by Isaac Nielsen with the kick out for a fresh, not fresh, because that did not hit the, the rim. Five seconds, four seconds, Connor Toulson finishes at the rim. Nice easy layup. Yeah, going back to the lineup to give guys minutes as you were talking about before Connor's drive. What an opportunity for these guys with the, you know, nearly 30-point lead. Second conference game of the year. You get Jarrell DeBerry that's seen limited action. Corey Calvert as well coming back off of a little bit of an injury for himself. Ben Nikwasa who's been complimenting Brandon Randolph all season long. Great opportunity for those guys to go out and get extended minutes, lead a team, go through reps against guys they're not seeing every day in practice. And so this will definitely pay dividends as the season goes forward, as you know, guys get in foul trouble or guys get nicked up and Dean have to sit out for different games as AK did tonight. You know, they're gonna be called upon to step up in big minutes, not just when there's a wide point margin as we see right now. Nar successful at all four free throw attempts. Toulson comes down hard on his backside. Back away, fella. And he is writhing in pain. Here we get a quick replay here as Connor geared up for that one. Nothing dirty on UMKC side. I believe it was uh, number 11, Tony Jackson, who got him as he was going up for that one. And you know, good thing to see Connor get up back on, get back on his feet on his own and. Steps in line to knock down these free throws, hopefully. Head coach Kareem uh, Richardson for UMKC. Vine that that was not an intentional foul, which I would have to agree looking at that replay. Like you said, there was nothing malicious that we saw from the intent. Connor went up with a head full of steam. He had his body altered in midair, and and he as soon as as soon as he got to his feet, he reached down for Connor Toulson trying to help him pick him up. Yeah, and, and he knew immediately he had gotten too much contact because Connor just defenseless in the air, as we saw from that initial replay, and just lost his balance as he was going up for it. Here we see Ben DeQuas with a quick little pass, and as Connor got going, just got knocked off balance in air. And you can see, excuse me, I thought it was Tony Jackson initially. We see Steve Doley immediately go over and try to help Connor up, didn't want to hurt him. And again, we initially thought maybe he had landed bad on that hip, which he did, but gratefully got up and uh, will stay in the ball game. And, We'll see what the officials say, if it was an intentional foul or not. From that last angle that we saw, it might have come across a little bit more malicious. But from the reverse angle from the baseline, you were able to see that he actually got the ball instead of the body. But it does look like they are not going to call that in a flagrant foul. But I think since they stopped play and went back to review it, I think Connor's going to have to sit this possession out, which allows UMKC and their bench to choose who they want to shoot the free throw in his behalf. And uh, Ben Nikwasa is going to step to the line to shoot the free throw. Ben Nikwasa with a smile turns around at the UMKC bench and points a finger up saying thanks. And he's mumbling to himself something. And he makes the first free throw. I think Ben initially, when he heard that it was going to be a the bench choice, spoke up and said, go ahead and pick me. And so UMKC went and picked him down. 37 points, why not let him go ahead and make a couple free throws if that's what he wants to do. 77 to 40, Utah Valley on top. UMKC with the step back three. 
lot of players going after that one. Nice catch by the fan in the seats. If Utah Valley ever got a football team, we got ourselves a tight end in the works. In seat five, throw three. Utah Valley going to try and run the shot clock and the game clock as much as possible. Corey Calvert coming off a high screen. He's going to drive to the lane. Tough layup for Calvert. And he gets it to Calvert. Good finish by Corey. Took the contact. Thought he was going to get fouled and still had the ability to rise up and finish that one high on the glass. And this one going to be called on the ground early. I believe it's going to go against Ben Nikwasa there. Just got him with a little bit of a body check as Marco Smith was driving to the rim. Isaac Nielsen will check out. Six points, nine rebounds for the big fella in 21 minutes of play. Mohamed checks out as well for UMKC. Michael Smith makes the first. UMKC, no field goals in the last three and a half minutes, however. And with that free throw, Marco Smith scores his first points of the ball game. They're going to go two of two from the free throw line, and he does. Kate Johnson. Nice pass to Zach Nelson, who somehow gets that pass out to Ben Nicross. Rims off. And here come the Ruse with possession. Past the timeline. And that last pass there by Zach, that's just due to repetition after repetition. No one you're going to have a guy there in the corner able to spot up when you're in desperation, just knowing through repetition where your guys are. And that one, Marco Smith, after making a pair of free throws, breaks the seal off the lid for himself and gets the ball on three point shot to go. Ben Nkwasa, Corey Calvert in the corner. 15 on the shot clock for Utah Valley. Zach Nelson back to Ben Nkwasa. Now in that bad pass from DeBerry. From De Nar with the kick out. Dully. And that ball will go out of play. Dully on the floor. Got to tie his shoes. How many times did that happen frustration. to you? I always triple knot in mine. No. Triple knot? <laughs> no. Wow. <laughs> no, just a, just a double, but I made sure those things were tight. But on occasion, when I maybe dribbled it out of bounds, they, you know, my shoes may have come undone, you know, blame it on the shoe a little bit. <laughs> Utah Valley now with 17 on the shot clock. Ben Nkwasa right down the drain. 82-45. Right back on the other end, Marco Smith. Now yeah, Brandon, excuse me, Ben Nkwasa, past the timeline at the logo. Little triple. That last three by Ben Nkwasa, that was the 12th three-point make by the Wolverines tonight. They shot a blistering percentage from the three-point line. And add that to the defense they've done, and Zach Nelson. Gets the and one, a little smile on his face of just relief to something to go his way. Zach Nelson will go to the line to finish the three-point play when we return. Utah Valley again, 84, UMKC 45. We'll be right back with more on New View TV right after this.
You're watching UVU TV. Zach Nelson gets fouled on his way up to the basket, makes it, and he comes away with a smile on his face. And that's where we stand as Zach Nelson sits on the bench, gathering his breath during the timeout, getting some coaching from head coach Mark Pope. And he'll step to the line to finish the three-point play. Utah Valley on top, 84 to 45. Thank you for joining us on this Utah Valley dominating performance tonight. UVU TV, Wax Sports Digital Network. This is back-to-back performances for Utah Valley to open up the conference in a demanding fashion. And we've seen it in a way we haven't been used to. We have 35 points off the bench tonight. Going to be 36 as Zach knocks down this free throw and 34 points in the paint. And uh, UMKC just couldn't get anything going tonight. They tried throwing varieties of defensive presses. Tried running all their different offensive sets against the Wolverines, and again, everything they threw at them, Wolverines were able to absorb and kind of counter with their own strategies as well. And again, another empty possession for UMKC. Jarrell DeBerry comes away with it. Cross court pass, Corey Calvert. Now Johnson, kick back out. Jarrell DeBerry missed. Zach Nelson rebound. Here, Jarrell try again. Missed. And Nar with the rebound for UMKC. And here come the Roos. Nar with the top of the key shot. Rims off. Zach Nelson with the board. And as Ben slows this one up, on this possession, you really see how these guys are emphasizing the core principles of their offense. You can see as any kick out, these guys are looking to drive, they're looking to touch the paint with the basketball and kick it back out to one of the other teammates. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Zach Nelson doing the work on Ahmed in the post. Stripped away. Zach Nelson on the floor looking for some sort of relief. He gets up, has a couple words to himself, and continues to chug along. Rightfully so, it looked like that defender came right across his left arm as Zach was trying to make his move up to the rim. And you know, with a 40 point ball game, it's tough for the officials to make calls going that other way. You know, they want to be, uh, you know, independent of the score and situation and call it as they see it, but tough to do. Nice three point shot from the corner. Brandon McKissick. Five twenty-four left to play in the ball game. Twenty-two on the shot clock. Utah Valley on top, eighty-five forty-eight over UMKC. Cross-court pass to Johnson. Hesitation step. Now Zach Nelson. Zach Nelson, who's been getting triple teamed every time he touches the ball. Johnson from the corner. Nice extra pass by Joel DeBerry to McKay in the corner. McKay, a, a walk-on guy that gives so much to the Wolverines during practice. And that was going down by Brandon McKissick, who's kind of got going the second half. But again, going back to McKay and the other guys in this lineup right now, gives so much to the starters. Again, all, star, all five starters averaging double figures this year. And, a lot of that attributable to how hard the other guys on the team pushed them in practice. And again, great to see them have an opportunity to get out here and show what they can do tonight. Utah Valley scoreless in their last two and a half minutes. Now checking into the ball game, Richard Harward and McKay and Daniel Nyman and McKay Johnson. And we're going to take a media time. This is going to be a full timeout. And we'll step aside as well. Utah Valley on top, 85-51. About 4.31 left to play. 
with that last three-point shot. Back-to-back -back threes for Brandon McKissick. He is now the leading scorer for all UMKC Roos right now. 11 points, four of six from the floor, two of two from three, one of two from the free throw line, five rebounds, four assists in 18 minutes of play. So not a bad night for the freshman guard from Ferguson, Missouri, the pride of St. Louis High School. Oh, we got a, a father-son dance-off combination. Kirk Cousins in the mix. Mom in the background, even encouragement. The referee issued a warning to Utah Valley for not breaking the huddle and not getting out of the timeout quick enough. And Utah Valley resumes play. That bench warning may be one of the few errors against the Wolverines tonight as everything has gone again their way. They've worked the ball together so well. As you mentioned before, they have 29 made field goals, 22 of those coming off of assists, and Ben DeQuasa keeps it going from the outside. That three-point shot by Ben DeQuasa is the 30th made field goal of the night. Jarrell DeBerry, head full of steam. Nice, he's a layup. 31 made field goals now for Utah Valley. And out of those 31, virtually half, just about 13 of them have been from three-point land. Richard Harwood stands his ground. McKay Johnson gets the rebound with his heel on the line. And so when we return after this, UMKC will have the ball right underneath their own hoop. It's up out on top, 90-51, 340 to play here on UMKC TV. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life, no matter your interests, from award-winning accounting to marketing and entrepreneurship programs, there's a place for you at Utah Valley University. A place to engage, to rise, to succeed, to become. watching UVU TV. Utah Valley on top, 90 to 51. And this place is banging right now. Not a single person has left the arena, including those little kids. It is a school night, and those parents do not care. Those kids are here, they're having a good time, they're enjoying the home crowd and the home team as Utah Valley is on top 90 to 51. And Utah Valley, we, we touched on this earlier, Holton, going out to a very impressive two-game start into this conference. And it really poses the question as to, is this Utah Valley team really this good? Or is everything that we know of the WAC conference really unknown? Oh, easy, 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 easy. And I think the WAC and the preseason schedules that they played, especially the top four or five teams in the league, as we see a layup here from Connor Tulsa on a previous play. But the preseason schedule these guys have played, the dominating performances that New Mexico State has had, the games Grand Canyon's played, and how Wolverines have played this postseason has established that the WAC is extremely good this year and up from previous years, meaning at the level of play that they went against, the competition they went against in 
preseason solidify that these guys can play. But these past two games haven't been fluke. You don't win by 40, 50 points back-to-back -back games in conference with so much film, so much talk about what guys do. You know, give the Wolverine credit, Coach Mark Pope credit for approaching these games and really trying to make a statement early in conference play. And uh, it can't be ignored. And again, those guys are going to wake up tomorrow night and they're all going to get notifications. Those guys mean the other coaches in the league, the other players in the league. And they're going to see how the Wolverines have dominated these games, not only just by outscoring teams, but only allowing, you know, 50, 50 points a game as Jarrell DeBerry tries to get going to the post. Dar comes away with the rebound for KC. Steve Tully. Ahmed working against Harward. And they're going to call Richard Harward with the foul. Ahmed 7-2. Going up against Richard Harward 6-11. And Harward got some elbow. Fair call. Ahmed will go to the line. This is the first, a little long. Ahmed still looking for his first points on the evening. And what an experience for Richard Harwood this season to have Isaac Nelson and AK Manning be his mentors and let him go against those guys and practice every day. Experience that'll be invaluable to him in his future going forward here at UVU. Another experience for Harwood tonight, the true freshman. And the foul's called away from the ball on Ahmed. But to go against Ahmed, another guy with some significant size. Not the girth that Harwood has, but definitely the height. And going forward, one of the tallest, maybe if not the tallest player in the conference in Ahmed. As Johnson makes that first free throw. Yeah, and as Richard gets to go against AK and Isaac every day in practice, there probably for sure isn't anybody in the conference that's going to intimidate Richard as he goes against the best two big men arguably in the league. And as you see there, reacted quick off that free throw miss and able to get the offensive rebound. Just unfortunately went out of bounds. Possession, 20 seconds on the shot clock, 2.30 left to play in the ball game. Utah Valley on top, 91 to 53. And that ball thrown with a by court violation against UMKC. Looking ahead, Utah Valley, they stay here this weekend. Chicago State comes to town, and Utah Valley will take on Chicago State here. And it's so important to take care of business at home. So many of the WAC teams and players are so good when they get to play on their home court. And a lot of that's accredited to the travel schedule. These guys have to play or have to travel to tough cities that you have to get on a plane. And after the plane ride, they sometimes have an you know, hour, two hour bus ride to get to the facilities that they're playing at. As Howard continues to fight, he's fouled on that offensive rebound after the putback. Taking care of business against Chicago State at home this year. Again, that'll probably be a, a little bit of a revenge game for these Wolverines. Chicago State came in to UVU and beat them last year on our home court. So that game probably marked on the return schedule for sure. Harwood makes the first free throw. UMKC, no offensive field goals in the last three minutes. And Harwood strokes the nylon with the second. Pull up jump shot, three pointer. Steve Dully. <laughs> Seattle U, as you mentioned, will be UMKC's next opponent. And they, again with a new coach. And some graduate transfers have seen a lot of success this season as well. And yeah, they're, they're among one of the other teams that really nobody's talking about that are having a fairly 
fairly decent season right now. They technically are ranked right below the Utah Valley in the conference standings. And that is that team will be no pushover either. Yeah, between Seattle and University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, as we get another three-point shot that goes in from Dolly. But between those two teams, as you mentioned, they don't get a lot of hype within the conference, but they are extremely uh, improved teams from last year and have had big preseason wins. And Rio Grande Valley, it's a tough place to go play. Again, as I mentioned, the drive it takes to get down to Edinburgh, Texas, and then University of Seattle, they get to play at the beautiful Key Arena, so there's always fans. It's always a fun place to play as Richard Howard gets another basket to go for him from down low. Got a 10 second shot clock, game clock difference. Ahmed with the step back distance jumper, misses. Rebounded by Ben Nikwasa. And Daniel Nyman, UMKC not fouling, shot clock is off. And Utah Valley will come away with a huge back to back home win to start conference play 2 0. 95 to 59 will be your final score from Orem, Utah. Utah Valley, Coach Pope and company will set their sights on Chicago State here at home on Saturday. UMKC and Coach Kareem Richardson will pack up and they'll head north to the, to the Pacific Northwest as they face Seattle U on Saturday. You can catch that one 3 p.m. on the WAC Digital Network. Final thoughts, Olton. Another big statement victory, 95-59 win for the Wolverines. All the confidence in the world going into their third game against Chicago State on Saturday night. But again, as Jake mentioned in your conversation with him earlier, it's always about the next game. They've won six in a row now, but it's going to be about that next game. And again, we get a few highlights from all the guys because it was all a team effort tonight. Everyone got involved. And UMKC, one of their rare highlights of that second half as it was all Wolverines tonight. Another big victory for Utah Valley tonight. 95-59 is your final score for our hardworking crew and our camera ops, Sean and his other friends working the cameras tonight. John and Preston, our sound techs, and Austin, our producer, and our directors, and everybody behind the scenes making this game possible. We thank you for letting us join you tonight here on the WAC Sports Digital Network and on UVU TV. For Holton Hunsaker, I'm Brandon Crow saying so long and good night from Orem, Utah. I had an idea. Lots of people have ideas. But engaged learning helped me develop my idea and make it real. And now with sales over a million dollars, best assignment ever. This copyrighted telecast of the Western Athletic Conference may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the WAC Digital Network.